morning, everyone. Happy Easter. I'm not going to do the big A word thing yet. We're going to save that for a few more seconds. Welcome. Uh, thank you so much for being here. My name is Chance Perdue. I'm the rector here at Trinity Church. Welcome in the name of the risen Jesus. Uh, as we're all filing in and finding our seats, uh, I invite you uh, to quiet your minds and hearts as uh, the St. Augustine Handbell Choir uh, commences with our prelude.
Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. with you and with your spirit let us pray almighty God who through your only begotten son Jesus Christ overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may by your life-giving spirit be delivered from sin and raised from death through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of God's Word. The first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, beginning with verse 34. So Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly, I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is the Lord of all. You yourselves know that what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism, that John proclaimed how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with the power he went about doing good and healing all those who were oppressed for the, by the devil for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him up on the third day and made him to appear, not only to the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. God. Our psalm this morning is 118, beginning with verse 14, and we will pray responsibly. 
The Lord is my strength and my song. And my salvation. The voice of joy and deliverance is in the dwellings of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die, but live. And the, Lord. the same stone which the builders refused. Has become the chief this is the Lord's doing. And it is in our this is the day that the Lord has made. A reading from Colossians, chapter 3, beginning with verse 1. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, it, who is your life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? <clears throat> and looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go. Tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. I speak to you this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Please be seated if you would. I just want to get in a little more practice. When I say, Alleluia, Christ is risen, you say, the Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. So, Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Thank you. That sounds so good to my ears. So if I say, Jesus loves me, this I know, for... Indeed, the Christian church has always believed that the Bible communicates this most basic foundational truth for all people. Jesus loves us and the Bible tells us so. But I think it's a fair question to ask which parts of the Bible tell us that Jesus loves us. I mean, look at it. It's pretty thick. There's a lot here. You know, if you whack somebody on the head with that, they would feel it, you know. It was written across different epics of history by people who'd never met each other. It's a relatively long story. It begins all the way at, well, the beginning with the creation of the cosmos. So which part of the Bible is about Jesus and how he loves us? Which bits zero in? on Jesus and his love for us. Well, the gospel reading you just heard from St. Mark, of course. The sermon St. Peter preached in the book of Acts, which we heard is our first reading, of course. But the truth is, all of it, all of it, the entire Bible, from Genesee on down to Revelation, as it says in one of my favorite movies, the entire Bible is about Jesus Christ and his love for this world he created. And this love compels him to unfold and execute a plan, a rescue that we are here today to celebrate. And that plan spans the entirety of the Bible. You see, if you read the opening pages of Scripture, you will read the primordial tale of humankind's beginnings, of Adam and Eve's perfect relationship with their creator in the garden. And very quickly, things take a turn. Well, really, Adam and Eve take a turn. They turn away from loving trust in the God who made them and turn toward self-sufficiency, self-determination, self-centeredness. They turn themselves and their subsequent offspring away from the creating source of life. And if you cut yourself off from communion with the creative source of life that you're made for, if you cut yourself off from that, what inevitably happens? Mortality, death. And if you're born into this world, and as you grow up, you become more and more conscious of your mortality, the inevitability of death, how do you honestly feel when you face that truth? Afraid, maybe? Can we be honest in church? <laughs> and how do we behave when we're afraid? Fear tends to lead to anger, and anger tends to lead to hatred, and hatred leads to every kind of manipulation and violence imaginable. And it doesn't take long for that to happen after the Garden of Eden in the Bible. Adam and Eve's son, Abel, is murdered by his own brother, and thus the tone is set. And Scripture continues with this story of a loving God providing for and calling his people back to himself through generation after generation of folks who for all their trying still live under the dark shadow of the knowledge of death and who still therefore tend to turn away from love and toward self-preservation. But we can't really preserve ourselves, can we? We can't generate our own life any more than we can create oxygen. Yet age to age, Scripture tells the tale of this God making promise after promise. One of those promises, which is often read on Easter Sunday, is spoken by a prophet over 2,700 years ago, and the promise goes like this. One day, the Lord will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces. It will be said on that day, behold, this is our God 
we have waited for him, that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. At this point in scripture, we get a very clear message. The root of the problem facing humanity is death. Death is the enemy. You heard it here, folks. And so the prophet foretells the Lord God will one day swallow up death forever. But that prophet himself eventually dies. He dies waiting on the fulfillment of that promise. That prophet's name is Isaiah. And if you have a bulletin with you and you care to take a look at the cover, I can show him to you. Now on the cover of your bulletin here, this is an icon of the resurrection of Christ. It's based on early Christian depictions. And if you look at the group of folks gathered on the right side of this image, you will see a long-haired, white-bearded fellow whose head is, his face is near the top bar of the cross. Long hair, white beard. That is the prophet Isaiah. If you look across to the other side of the image, on the outer left edge, you will see a white-haired king holding an unfurled scroll. He is the guy you heard from in the psalm we prayed together a few moments ago. He wrote that psalm, which is older even than Isaiah's prophecy, and his name is King David. You may know him from his slingshot Goliath defeating days. One of David's lines that we all said together this morning, two times in fact, is this. The right hand of the Lord brings mighty things to pass. The right hand of the Lord brings mighty things to pass. Well, first off, let's ask this question. Who is the Lord? You are in church on Easter, I will remind you. Who is the Lord? Come on, it starts with a J, rhymes with schmizus. Who is the Lord? Thank you, Jesus Christ is Lord. And this image that you are holding shows the Lord accomplishing the greatest rescue in history winning the ultimate battle, claiming the cosmic victory for all eternity. Victory over what, you may ask? Well, victory over death. Just look at Jesus. Trampled down under his feet are the gates of death. Down in the black darkness of Hades, the shackles and keys of sin and death are strewn about in broken pieces. In his left hand, he holds the cross, the instrument of his torture and execution, which now stands as an invincible weapon against the power of death. Death, who, by the way, if you look real close and squint, you will see at the very bottom of the image, personified. Death is personified, shackled and pinned down forever underneath the cross of Christ. Death is robbed of its ultimate power and utterly defeated by Christ. And remember what we said this morning along with King David, the right hand of the Lord brings mighty things to pass. The right hand of the Lord. Now, look at Jesus' right hand in that image. What mighty thing is the Lord bringing to pass? He has descended into death and is surrounded by the dead from ages past. That's why you see so many folks from the Old Testament in this image. And with his right hand, he has grasped someone around the wrist and is literally raising this person up from the dead, pulling him up out of the tomb. The one being raised, who if you look real close, you'll see he's being raised not by grasping onto Jesus, but by being grasped by Jesus while still dead. This is the first human, Adam. For ages untold, our first ancestor waited in the darkness of Hades, bound and covered by the shackles and shadow of death. And on Good Friday, Jesus of Nazareth endured the full weight of sin and death, descending to the dead himself. But death cannot hold the source of life. Nor, because of his great love, can death now hold the ones he came to save. It's not just Adam who gets raised, you see. As in Adam all have died, so also in Christ 
shall all be made alive. Jesus is raised that he might raise us all. And you want to know what's maybe the best news of all? In the scriptures you hear today, in the prayers and praises that are raised, in the water of baptism, the bread and wine of the Eucharist, even this image on the front of your bulletin, you are not encountering metaphors. You are not being told a fanciful fairy tale that might help you have a more positive outlook on life. You are not participating in communal ritual actions that have something vague to do with the coming of spring. All of these things are real, and the Christ that our worship manifests is more real than we can possibly imagine. The story is actually, really, literally true. Do you know what this means? Well, I'm gonna tell you. The story is true. Christ is really risen from the dead. So it means that all of the Bible, all of reality is rooted in and finds its source and its summit in the love of the triune God which gets made manifest in the person of Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son. It means that God became one of us in Jesus so that he could experience everything we experience, even and especially death, so that he could defeat it and unite us to himself in a perfect bond of love that will never end. Christ is risen, which means that no matter how low you might have gone, no matter how spent you might feel even today, no matter how dark your own brokenness might be, no matter how large the shadow of death seems to loom over your life, no matter how many times you have tried and seemingly failed to be good enough or feel worthwhile or lovable, Jesus Christ has descended even lower. And he has conquered every square inch of death's territory. And in him, you are beloved. You are beloved. In Jesus, all of death is defeated, swallowed up in victory, and can therefore no longer be the final word. In him, you today are invited to exactly the same kind of encounter that St. Peter talked about in that first reading, eating and drinking with the risen Christ. In him, you and I can be raised up, saved, transformed for all eternity. And so I have one simple question. Would you let him do that? Would you wager whatever trust or hope you can muster on this whole thing actually being true? Can you be grateful? Can you be grateful for divine saving love? One of my own heroes said this, when man stands before the throne of God, when he has fulfilled all that God has given him to fulfill, when all sins are forgiven, all joy restored, then there is nothing left for him to do but give thanks. Christ has created all things, including us. He has lived and cried and laughed and suffered and died and has been raised from the dead for the life of the whole world, including me and you. He has filled all things with his Holy Spirit. He already indwells the prayers and praises we offer him this morning. Rank on rank of angels and all the saints in heaven are standing right now ready to celebrate baptism with us in a few moments. And we are going to join their eternal holy hymn around the table as we commune with the risen Lord this day. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. He has done all the hard, miraculous work of salvation. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, hell, where is your victory? All that's left is for this day and each of our days to be marked, textured, and lived 
in profound thanksgiving. So as our psalm said today, let the voice of joy and deliverance be heard in the dwellings of the righteous even now. For Christ is risen, that he might raise us. The right hand of the Lord has brought mighty things to pass indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, if the baptismal party uh, would join me up here near the font. The fun continues. The, the godmother is pulling double duty. She's been in the choir, so she had to descend. <laughs> I hope you have your bulletin. We are on page 12. Dearly beloved, Scripture teaches that we are all dead in our sins and trespasses, but by grace we may be saved through faith. Our Savior Jesus Christ said, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And he commissioned the church to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Here we ask our Heavenly Father that these candidates being baptized with water may be filled with the Holy Spirit, born again and received into the church as living members of Christ's body. Therefore, I urge you to call upon God the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ, that of his abundant mercy he will grant to these candidates that which by nature they cannot have. The candidates for holy baptism will now be presented. I'll just say all four of their names. <laughs> Have you already been baptized? I have. Do you desire to be baptized? Yes. Today, on behalf of these children, you shall make vows to renounce the devil and all his works, to trust God wholeheartedly, and to serve him faithfully. It is your task to see that these children are taught as soon as they are able to learn the meaning of all these vows under the faith that you will profess as revealed in the Holy Scriptures. They must come to put their faith in Jesus Christ and learn the creeds, the Lord's Prayer, the Ten Commandments, and all other things that a Christian ought to know, believe, and do for the welfare of their souls. When they have embraced all these, they are to come to the bishop to be confirmed, that they may publicly claim the faith for their own and be further strengthened by the Holy Spirit to serve Christ in his kingdom. Are you willing and ready to undertake this? Do you renounce the devil and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I Both of you, say it loud. I renounce them. Do you renounce the empty promises and deadly deceits of this world that corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce them. I renounce them. Do you renounce the sinful desires of the flesh that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. I renounce them. Almighty God, deliver you from the powers of darkness and evil and lead you into the light and obedience of the kingdom of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. All right, now we're going to say, I do. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and confess him as your Lord and Savior? I do. Do you joyfully receive the Christian faith as revealed in the Holy Scriptures of the Old and New Testaments? I do. Will you obediently keep God's holy will and commandments and walk in them all the days of your life? Now we say, I will, the Lord being my helper. Uh, I'll ask everyone to stand as able, and kids, kids who are in the room, come right up here. You need a front row seat for this. From all the four corners, that is just fine. Come on, just right here. Pile up and have a seat right here. We're at the top of page 14 in your bulletins. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? Yes. 
Amen. Let us join with these candidates to proclaim our faith in the words of the ancient baptismal confession, the Apostles' Creed. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I do. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in Jesus Christ? I do. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I do. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now pray for these candidates who are to receive the sacrament of baptism. That these children may come to confess their faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We beseech you to hear us, good Lord. That these candidates may continue in the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers. We beseech you to hear us, good Lord. That they may walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which they have been called, ever growing in faith and all heavenly virtues. We beseech you to hear us, good Lord. That they may persevere in, resist in resisting evil, and whenever they fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. We beseech you to hear us, good Lord. That they may proclaim by word and deed the good news of God in Christ Jesus to a lost and broken world. We beseech you to hear us, good Lord. That as living members of the body of Christ, they may grow up in every way into him who is the head. We beseech you to hear us, good Lord. That looking to Jesus, they may run with endurance the race set before them, and at the last receive the unfading crown of glory. We beseech you to hear us, good Lord. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting Father, in your great mercy you saved Noah and his family in the ark from the destruction of the flood, prefiguring the sacrament of holy baptism. Look mercifully upon these your servants, Wash and sanctify them through your Holy Spirit, that they may be delivered from destruction and received into the ark of Christ's church, and being steadfast in faith, joyful through hope, and rooted in love, they may pass through the turbulent floods of this troublesome world and come into the land of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Lift up your hearts. We lift him up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John in the river Jordan when the Holy Spirit descended upon him as a dove. We thank you, Father, for the waters of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are made regenerate by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, Father, sanctify this water by the power of your Holy Spirit. May all who are baptized here be cleansed from sin, be born again, and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We need the stool, please. Can we reach? Let's see. Come on over here. You want to try this? You want to come around? Yeah. Name this child. All right, just lean right over here. There we go. Perfect. Theodore Sterling, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, you can help out. I got something for you. There you go. Theo, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Good job. Come on, bud. Name this child. <laughs> All right, bud, lean right over. Tobias J., I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let me help you out a little. There we go. Toby, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. All right, come on, get out. There you go. Name this child. Oh, she's ready. <laughs> Liliana Grace, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, let me get you dried off a little. There we go. Lily, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. All right, kiddo, come on over. Is it better if mom holds, holds you, you think? We can do it that way. That's fine. Here, we can get rid of this. Can I hand that off to you, Reverend? Thank you. And now, name this child. There she, she Poppy Samantha. Ready, kiddo. Here we go. Poppy Samantha, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let me dry you off. There we go. Poppy, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon these your servants the forgiveness of sin, received them as your own children by adoption, made them members of your holy church and raised them to the new life of grace. Sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit, that they may enjoy everlasting salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the fellowship of the church. Confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in the royal priesthood of all his people. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's greet one another in the name of the Lord. Now, I'm not going to give you actual fire. Well done. Well done. We'll just leave it here. People, why not? Congratulations, gang. We done it. Please be seated if you would. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Chance. I'm the pastor of this here church, and I am terribly glad to see each and every one of you here this morning. Welcome, especially if you're visiting. Welcome in the name of Christ. So, so very glad that you're here. Welcome as well to everyone joining us uh, via the internet. Uh, just a little bit of um, housekeeping, and uh, then we will continue right along our way. We're going to leave the font here with the baptismal water in it. So as you're on your way up for communion, if you want to put your hands in and remember your baptism, it is here for you. Uh, the, uh, maybe the central thing that I need to do is to say thank you, to try to practice uh, what I literally just preached. Um, so to the staff of Trinity Church, uh, who have been more ahead of the curve in preparation for Holy Week and Easter than I have ever experienced it in my entire ministry. Thank you. Um, each and every one of you are a joy to work with. Uh, thank you to the vestry of the church uh, for continual and ongoing support. Thank you uh, to every single volunteer, uh, musicians, greeters, ushers, altar servers, everyone who pulls together uh, in the work of the people, that's what liturgy means, uh, that we 
might praise the Lord each and every Sunday, but especially on this day. Thank you so much. And there is another group that I have to thank. In the last eight days, altar guilds all around the world have had their work cut out for them. They've had to switch this stuff out so many times and polish so many things and move so many plants and so many flowers. So if you're here and you're in the altar guild, would you stand up? Thank you, altar guild. It is an absolute joy uh, to come in here and say, oh, everything's ready. So thank you so very much. Uh, just a few more just housekeeping words. If you didn't put a flower in the cross, please put one in uh, as you leave today. We want to fill it up and make it as beautiful as possible. I believe there is a baptismal cake somewhere in the building. I think if you just keep going that way, you will find the cake. Uh, and finally, we're going to celebrate Holy Communion here in a few moments. And all baptized Christians are welcome to receive Holy Communion at Trinity Church. If you're not receiving communion today for any reason, please do come up with everyone else. Just when you get up here, simply cross your arms over your chest like so. And that is our signal to pray a blessing over you instead, which it is our great joy and honor to do. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. that offering took a little longer than normal, that's all. (laughs) 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was offered for us and has taken away the sin of the world, who by his death has destroyed death and by his rising to life again has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection he broke the bonds of death trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also, that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom, where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed once for all upon the cross. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. We do not presume to come to this, your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. 
We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb.
Together, let us pray. I can get to the right page. Almighty and ever-living God, we most... Oh, that's the wrong one. See, I didn't get to the right page. There's the page. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.